Yo, yo, what's up? It's Kyle Got Camera. And in this video, I'm going to share with you how I increase my heart rate variability using my Aura Ring. And I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Aura Ring at the time of this recording, but uh, I have been using it pretty religiously to track certain metrics. And there is a lot of great discussion happening around HRV and the science of improving it. And I just wanna share with you some of the things that I've done to get crazy high scores. I know that HRV is relative to every individual, but my scores have been steadily increasing. And I think there are certain things that attribute to the increase in my scores. So I wanna share some of the things that I do on a daily basis or a semi-regular basis that might attribute to this. And maybe you can apply some of these in your life if you're struggling with your HRV or you wanna improve it. So hopefully this video will give you some quick steps that you can implement and try to experiment with. I don't know if these are actually the things that are improving my heart rate variability. They're just things that I do regularly that I think could really help. So I actually have no like scientific data to say that this is what's causing what, but these are sort of my assumptions. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. So heart rate variability has a direct link to how well you're recovering, how well you're dealing with stress, how much you might be in a parasympathetic or a sympathetic state. And the reason why my scores are probably really high is because right now I'm focused on a lot of recovery and wellness related activities. That's how I spend most of my time as I'm experimenting with a lot of products, as I partner with different health and wellness companies, I'm trying to figure out uh, what are the applications of these different devices, what are the applications of these different products. And, and I've developed certain habits and certain things that I do on a daily basis that are optimizing my recovery, my well-being. If I just open up the app and I look at what my scores are, we're gonna just see, okay, today was the lowest I've had in a while, which is 89, then 105, 100, 112, 90, 110, 104, 112, 111, 113, 93. Like it, it's just so clear to me that what I'm doing is working because there, I mean, it's not, it hasn't always been that high. Like if I go back even a couple weeks, you know, I'm looking at 95, I'm looking at 96, 96, 94, 95, 88, 86. So I've, I think I've gained about 10 to 20 points in terms of my HRV. And I want to attribute it to a couple things that I've changed. And I, I believe this would probably ha has a lot to do with it. So number one, my HRV scores are tend to be higher because I do this thing called prehabbing. And prehabbing is a form of exercise recovery, I guess, where you're doing tiny isometrics and it's about building the mind muscle connection where I am, let's say, bending my wrist in a certain way or I'm twisting my torso in a certain way. I'm just really dialing in on that contraction. And there's a process where when you get it just right and you can isolate that contraction, you can reach this point where your body will release this chemical called BDNF, which is brain-derived neurotropic factor. When we're working out, we're already producing BDNF, but we're also producing this other chemical called neurogenic inflammation. And when we do prehabbing, we're producing more of that BDNF and it makes you feel really good. It makes you feel really calm and it puts you in this like Zen like state. And what this does is it creates that connection between your mind and that set of muscles. And this is really a system of nervous system development where you are really strengthening that connection and making that stronger. And by making that stronger, what happens is you're tightening some muscles. And as you start to let go of the other muscles that are trying to help, it will start to release, almost like stretching, except instead of stretching, you're tightening. And by tightening, other things get looser. So when you do this, it releases a lot of tension and it makes you very relaxed and it puts you into a parasympathetic state or it puts me into a parasympathetic state. So, I, so it feels, you know, your breathing slows down, you're more relaxed, you're more calm. And that's something I've been doing for a long time. And I will link up a video about how I fixed an injury really quickly that was really, really bad using prehabbing. And I actually interview the founder, the guy named Skip Kelly, who talks all about how it actually works and the science behind it. And you can go check out that video right here. The second thing that I do that I think really helps with my high HRV scores is the sleep stuff. I take my sleep very seriously and I have a really good ritual. I have a really good routine. I have a very nice circadian rhythm that I've set intentionally. So I go to bed at the same time, I wake up at the same time. So the recovery process 
that I get during sleep is really optimized and it's really good. And you know, if I'm getting really great sleep, my body's gonna be able to restore and recover and do all the processes that it needs to do when I sleep. So if you wanna learn more about my sleep system or the way that I've designed my sleep or optimized my sleep, I have also made a video about that right here, which you can go check out. It's the most thorough video I've ever made and is super, super valuable. I highly recommend it. Number three is breath work. So in the morning I do Wim Hof breathing and I will do that for three to five rounds. It usually takes about 15 minutes. Even though Wim Hof breathing is a mouth mouth breathing and that usually should excite the nervous system, what I found is when you hold your breath with no air in your lungs for a long period of time, you know, one, two, three, sometimes four minutes, and you're sitting there with, you know, basically not breathing and there's no air like in your body, um, you drop it into this deep sympathetic or parasympathetic state. In my experience, that's what it feels like. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. That's just how I feel is I feel very relaxed. I feel very at ease. And I also feel very resistant to stress. I feel very non-reactive, which is interesting. But I do that in the morning. And then at nighttime, I will do gentle nose-nose breathing right before bed. So as I'm laying down, I usually listen to an audiobook as I'm falling asleep. And while I'm laying there and I'm listening to my book, I'm just breathing in through my nose and out through my nose very softly. Just, And I'm doing that just now even doing that i feel myself getting a little bit more relaxed and i try to be very conscious during the day to try to breathe through my nose and i notice that if i'm ever feeling anxious or stressed it usually has something to do with the fact that i'm breathing up here in my chest and i'm usually breathing through my mouth and that's the type of breathing that we do when we're anxious or when we're stressed. And so by doing the nose nose breathing, it definitely calms me down and just makes everything a bit slower. It slows down time and definitely will put you to sleep really quickly. Number four that I do is walking. I don't know what it is about walking, but when I walk, I just go into a different world. Sometimes I'll go for hour, two hour, sometimes even three hour long walks and I believe that that is a huge contributor to my recovery, to my HRV. And the other thing that I do, the fifth and the final, I believe it's the fifth, is I meditate. So whether it's silent meditation where I'm just focusing on my breath and being mindful of that and trying to count my breaths, or it's the six phase meditation, which I will link up down below, which is Vishen Lakhiani's meditation. Every time I do meditation, I just, I open my eyes and I'm like, wow, I feel amazing. I'm so relaxed, right? Uh, sometimes in the morning, I'll do red light therapy. So if it's not too nice outside, normally I go outside and I look at the sun. If it's not very nice outside, I'll just sit in front of the red light and I will be there for you know, 10, 20 minutes. And whether I'm breathing or I'm listening to an audiobook or a podcast, I'm just sort of relaxing and recovering, really recovering in, in front of the, the red light, just literally taking in the light sitting there absorbing it. The seventh thing that I do is I'm using my infrared sauna pretty frequently. And if you haven't seen the video about the infrared sauna, then I will link it up right here or down below in the description. And I'll do that for about 20 to 30 minutes, probably four or five times a week. And again, very relaxing. You're sitting there, you're sweating, you're detoxing, you're meditating. You could be listening to a podcast, whatever. But I mean, a lot of my time right now is being spent doing these different recovery activities. Number one, for health reasons. And then number two is because I'm trying to figure out like what actually moves the needle and also like what do I enjoy the most? And I, luckily enough, as part of my job, this is the things that I get to experiment with to figure out like what products and what companies I wanna work with. The eighth thing that I do is I do cold showers. So at nighttime, before I go to bed, I will turn my shower cold and I'll sit in it for about 30 to 60 seconds. And what this does again is it helps relax me before bed and it also cools down my core body temperature and that helps me get better sleep. And I talk about that in the sleep video. Man, there, there are a lot of things that I'm doing right now that are probably helping with this and I didn't even realize how many there were, but here's the 10th one. The 10th one is called RPR. And I stumbled across this through this guy named Cal Dietz who's an amazing trainer uh, out of Minnesota and it's a recovery method. Basically you take your thumbs and you press them into certain parts of your nervous system and you're basically rubbing these, these parts of your nervous system and you're activating them, right? So you take your thumb and you move it in 
down like this while doing some belly breathing. I'll link up the videos to the resources in the description, but this is really interesting, really fascinating how quickly you can see results with this RPR thing. RPR stands for reflexive performance reset. So yeah, it's just in here, down here, around this, I'll, I'll, videos down below, you can go check them out. Last but not least is something called MAT, which is muscle activation technique. So with this, you go to see a practitioner where they will work on you very similar to RPR in, in, in many ways, but also different, it's its own, its own thing. And so what it is, is basically working with the nervous system, strengthening the nervous system by activating different muscles, not so dissimilar from the prehabbing thing, just you're working with a practitioner. And these are all the things that I'm doing right now to optimize my recovery, optimize my stress and my nervous system health and my resilience and my ability to recover. These are amazing tools and you don't have to do all of them. I would just say pick one or two or three that maybe sound interesting to you or sound like low hanging fruits to you. For me, if I were to make recommendations, I would say the nose nose breathing is just, it's a no brainer. The, the next thing I would say is just RPR. It's so easy. It's free. You can do it on yourself. Just watch the videos on YouTube test it, see if it makes a difference for you. And three would be meditation or cold showers or something like that. They're, they're, they're easy, they're free, and they make a world of difference in how you feel, how you respond to stress, how you show up day to day. Honestly, I'm blown away by how well I'm recovering. I'm blown away by how relaxed I am all the time. And I, the reason why I was inspired to make this video is because I was just with a friend. We, you know, we're hanging out, we went to the beach, uh, did some of the things that I do on a regular basis. And he's like, wow, I feel so, so good. And I'm like, yeah, this is my life. Like every day, like I feel like this. So I wanted to share this with you because I don't think it's very normal to have these highest scores and to feel as relaxed and as calm as I do and be in a parasympathetic state. And there's also someone in my Facebook group who was asking, hey Kyle, like how do I get into a parasympathetic state? Uh, this to me, is like the ultimate life hack for stress and to just have a better life, you know, because ultimately our life experience is determined by how we feel in our body. And so if we can use these tools to change our state, you know, and change how we feel inside our body, we're going to show up way differently, right? Like we're going to show up to the sales call just a little bit less reactive, or we're going to come home to our partner and we're going to be much more present with them, or we're going to actually digest our food because we are breathing and we are present with our meal and we are chewing slowly and consciously. So these have absolutely transformed my life. I hope they help you and I'm so happy to share them with you. If this was helpful or if you're curious about any of the things that I mentioned, let me know in the comments and like this video, give it a big thumbs up. As always, be well and I will see you in the next one.